for watching this video i am sanjay gheji and i welcome you all to my youtube channel uh, this is my third video in the series on uh, refrigeration in the last video i explained about uh, uh, vcrs that is vapor compression refrigeration system uh, working and analysis uh, with all detailed uh, steps of calculations uh, but the analysis of uh, vcrs can uh, never be done without the without the pH charts and property table of uh, refrigerants. This is uh, here on the screen you can see this is a typical P pH chart of uh, our refrigerant R134A. Such uh, number of charts are available for uh, various uh, refrigerants like R11, R12, R22, uh, R410A, uh, uh, Ammonia, R717, R500 series and so on. There is a, there is a very large family of uh, refrigerants. Okay. In fact, uh, R11, R12 have been uh, uh, totally banned out and uh, R22 is uh, being phased out uh, because uh, these refrigerants were having some uh, issues with the uh, environment uh, and the climate uh, had, a, had a bad impact on the climate, uh, <coughs> particularly ozone due to ozone depletion potential and uh, global warming potential. Uh, these these have been uh, banned out and uh, newer refrigerants like uh, R400 series, R500 series uh, are, are, uh, are replacing uh, these uh, refrigerants. Uh, anyways, uh, let us uh, look. So today let us uh, learn uh, this the basic structure or the format of uh, this uh, pH chart. Uh, how to read it, how to plot the uh, points and uh, processes and uh, draw the cycle diagram of a VCRS uh, and how to obtain the required properties and how to interpret uh, these property tables and uh, also relate uh, the values uh, to pH charts. Uh, there are <coughs> for any refrigerant uh, uh, pH chart is there as well as uh, property tables are also given. Uh, let me show you the, such a in this image. Uh, this is the pH chart image uh, in the same way uh, we can have uh, for the same refrigerant uh, property tables are given this is a this is a table of uh, saturation conditions which is applicable to saturated vapor and uh, liquid conditions and uh, one more table one more set of table uh, is uh, provided that is uh, properties of super uh, table okay table part uh, we will see a little later uh, let's uh, Let's focus on the uh, pH chart first. Now see, uh, see this pH chart uh, very keenly. This is very very important uh, basic tool uh, required for the uh, design and analysis of uh, VCRS. Okay, so this is a basically pressure versus enthalpy uh, scale plot. Okay. On uh, on y axis or vertical axis, uh, pressure values are provided. These are uh, ranging from uh, 0.5 to uh, uh, maximum limit is 15 on this chart. Okay, and unit is bar. Uh, and enthalpy is uh, on the x axis uh, are given in kilojoule per kg. Okay, also look the uh, values. Uh, these are like a single digit uh, units and up to maximum is the 15 bar uh, limit. Uh, one more important thing to note here is uh, the pressure values are not evenly uh, spaced out or not equally spaced out. Okay, this the spacing is uh, varying one. So this is not a linear scale. This is but uh, but this is a, a logarithmic scale. That is why uh, such variation is there. You can see here uh, one to one point five is uh, this much gap, but. Uh, Next, uh, only 4.5 difference, uh, they have so much of gap, but uh, as we move upwards, uh, uh, for one one bar change, uh, this this gap is uh, almost uh, half of this, okay. So this is the uneven spacing. Uh, then look for the enthalpy values. These are in the range of hundreds, starting from the hundred and uh, uh, the uh, in, in between steps are uh, in the multiples of tens uh, okay and uh, I think uh, uh, after viewing this all the range uh, 
enthalpy values are quite uh, evenly spaced out so there is no issue with uh, handling the enthalpy values it, it will be easier okay and then see this uh, uh, <coughs> see this complete picture uh, there you find uh, remarkable things uh, this this uh, this dark line or this dark curve is the saturated liquid curve uh, which represents the saturated liquid condition in the same way here we have another curve uh, on the right hand side this is the saturated vapor curve okay all the points on this uh, curve will be saturated vapor hmm? uh, to the right of uh, saturated vapor it is all superheated vapor okay this state is a superheated vapor to the left of saturated liquid it is all subcooled liquid or uh, compressed liquid or liquid simply liquid okay and in between these two uh, these two curves so uh, this this uh, this is going to be liquid and vapor mixture region uh, typically known as wet region okay now in this uh, uh, this chart uh, the critical point not is not shown but these two curves uh, meet together at some point over uh, at the top that is known as the critical point okay then apart from pressure and enthalpy uh, we find here along the saturated liquid curve uh, some temperatures are uh, given okay so these temperatures are actually saturation temperatures corresponding to the saturation pressures okay uh, it means that uh, saturation temperature means uh, it is the uh, these are the nor boiling point temperatures or phase change temperatures okay uh, <coughs> in the same way as uh, temperatures are here uh, for a given pressure let's let us say for 5 bar pressure uh, uh, saturation temperature is 15 degrees celsius same 15 degrees celsius is appearing uh, for saturated vapor also this is because uh, during the phase change process uh, that is uh, while uh, evaporating from uh, this liquid to vapor state temperature normally uh, does not change it remains constant both pressure and temperature remain constant uh, that's why uh, the, uh, the both both side we see the same temperature uh, because it is only a part of uh, latent heat uh, latent heat is absorbed uh, and only phase change uh, process happens okay uh, <coughs> then that's why on the on both sides we find uh, the same temperature uh, now here see as the pressure increases uh, the saturation temperature also increases okay for 4 it is a 10 for 5 bar it is a 15 degrees celsius 6 bar it is 20 degrees celsius and and so on okay uh, like uh, we uh, when we come down uh, the uh, temperature saturation temperature also come down for every uh, pressure for every pressure there is a unique uh, value of uh, saturation temperature okay or uh, vice versa for uh, every temperature there is a unique pressure of saturation pressure okay uh, normally in the vapor compression si refrigeration cycle we are given the uh, we are either given uh, pressure of uh, condensation or a temp corresponding uh, temp condensing temperature uh, or uh, on evaporator side we are given condensing uh, evaporating temperature uh, that is uh, saturation temperature or the pressure corresponding to evaporating uh, uh, evaporating temperature or evaporating pressure uh, is also specified okay uh, now let us look at this uh, region uh, apart from this uh, pressure temperature and enthalpy uh, some other important uh, properties are there here you see it is written constant entropy and unit is given kilojoule per kg kelvin okay so these inclined lines uh, having the greater uh, having the steep slope and get greater slope are the constant entropy lines again these uh, you can see uh, it is starting from 2.32 2.24 2.16 2.08 and so on okay uh, here the spacing is broader one and here they are getting uh, narrower getting uh, close to each other okay the spacing is not uh, uniform one uh, then these dot uh, uh, dotted lines are also there okay uh, here it is written density uh, for this chart uh, density lines are given but uh, many a times uh, uh, these are lines for the specific volume okay uh, so these have a flatter uh, uh, <coughs> flatter uh, uh, slope uh, and values are given like 1.6, 2.4, 3.2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. Okay. Then uh, we have uh, he here you can see these uh, these lines, these vertical lines. These are actually temperature lines. Here it is given. Uh, read it. 
constant temperature in degree Celsius. These are constant temperature lines in the superheated region and its values are given at the bottom like starting from 1 200, 180, 160, 140, 120, 100, 80, 60 and so on. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you, if you keenly observe it uh, at the bottom part that is at low pressure uh, these are almost vertical and coincident with the enthalpy lines uh, but as we move away uh, move upwards uh, at the higher pressures uh, these uh, uh, temperature lines are uh, getting uh, inclined uh, uh, towards left side are uh, getting uh, deviated away okay uh, again the, these temperature lines are uh, starting from the uh, uh, saturate, saturated vapor curve here you can see uh, this is uh, this is the 40 degree Celsius uh, saturated uh, vapor condition uh, which is uh, saturation temperature uh, in superheated this uh, 40 degree Celsius is line mo line is moving like this it is coming down and down and down and uh, this is the 40 degree Celsius uh, same is true for any other uh, temperature you can uh, draw any uh, any va any value temperature in the uh, superheated region like this okay uh, in this way uh, this way to, uh, in all uh, five properties are there pressure temperature uh, entropy enthalpy and uh, uh, density uh, so auto in all uh, five properties can be obtained from this uh, chart okay uh, enthalpy values are the vertical lines okay uh, to plot a point on this chart, we need at least uh, two properties, either pressure, temperature, uh, or uh, uh, <coughs> or any two com any combination of the two properties is required to fix up the point. Okay, uh, generally pressure and temperature values are given. Uh, for saturated conditions, saturated liquid or saturated vapor, uh, either pressure or either one of the pressure or temperature is sufficient to uh, specify the condition. But for uh, mixture region, uh, to specify a point here uh, exactly to locate, we need a dryness. We need a dryness fraction. Dryness fraction means uh, the ratio of uh, mass of vapor to the mass of uh, total mixture. That is mass of vapor plus divided by mass of vapor plus uh, mass of liquid okay <coughs> so uh, so x uh, uh, it is a fraction uh, uh, so x equal to 0 means saturated liquid and it increases in this direction as the evaporation takes place in the uh, from uh, from left to right and uh, its value increases like uh, 0 uh, from 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.7 0.8 and so on and for so on super saturated vapor x equal to 1 so these are the limits of uh, dryness fraction okay depending upon the uh, uh, dryness fraction the location of uh, mixture will be depending and uh, now uh, one more thing you see uh, and for enthalpy uh, 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 in the liquid uh, from any point in the liquid up to saturation uh, point uh, that is saturated liquid this part is known as sensible heat or uh, sensible heat of a uh, uh, subcooled liquid then from this saturation temperature to uh, uh, the, this saturated vapor uh, condition uh, it, this part is known as latent heat and again from this uh, saturated vapor condition to superheated condition uh, is, it is known as sensible heat this is also sensible heat but uh, specifically it is known as heat of uh, uh, superheat okay degree of superheat or enthalpy of superheat so th three basic parts are there uh, in case of uh, sens sensible heat uh, of liquid and uh, sensible heat of vapor temperature rise is seen so mcp delta t uh, formula are applicable here and here but for this part it is uh, uh, it is all uh, uh, latent heat okay uh, so these are the things we have to uh, see there are in all five uh, uh, standard states this is the cooled state then uh, saturated liquid uh, then this is uh, mixture liquid and vapor mixture saturated vapor and superheated vapor so five possible states are uh, there okay uh, again for in between values uh, for any uh, any value which is coming in between we have to do uh, an interpolation uh, for uh, to do that we have to uh, we have to have some judgment and that judgment comes by practice it is 
it is not it is not like a one uh, one shot process uh, you have to uh, you have to handle it uh, handle this chart uh, many a times uh, for while solving the problems and all uh, then uh, then by practice uh, you come to know how to make the judgments and how to uh, do uh, approximations okay so this is about the ph diagram similarly we have uh, property tables which also give the same values now look at this property table so property tables are available uh, for the saturation conditions and the superheated conditions no, uh, these are not available uh, unlimitedly for all uh, only uh, only the typical conditions are uh, covered in the tables okay this is now this is a table of uh, saturated liquid and vapor condition here you can see uh, these are listed according to temperature so this is a temperature column and in front of it uh, there is a absolute pressure in bar uh, it means uh, for a given temperature this pressure will be uh, saturation pressure just like uh, on ph diagram then various uh, density of uh, liquid is given uh, density of liquid means uh, the values uh, belonging to this then uh, specific volume of a vapor that is a saturated vapor meter cube per kg are given specific heat is given kilojoule per kg kelvin for liquid and vapor then entropies are specified for liquid and vapor enthalpy for liquid and vapor you see uh, this enthalpy uh, again uh, suffix are used hf f uh, suffix f is for the liquid enthalpy and suffix g is for the vapor enthalpy okay in the same way for entropy sf and sg okay same is the same thing is followed uh, these two columns uh, these two columns actually belong to uh, these two curves all the points on the saturated line are covered under under this column so liquid enthalpy column and all the uh, points on the saturated vapor curve are covered under uh, this column okay so so for only saturated condition the values are available uh, for anything for any uh, point in between uh, we have to we have to use the dryness fraction value and from that uh, we have to find the uh, uh, corresponding values okay then let us say uh, let us cross verify one uh, let us take one say, simple example and cross verify uh, how to correlate uh, the the values of ph chart and uh, to uh, saturation table now from table let us look at uh, this minus 20 degree celsius and uh, corresponding pressure is 1.3268 bar let us look at here let us locate the minus 20 degree celsius minus 20 degree celsius is here and uh, uh, by drawing a horizontal line i can uh, get the pressure value here which is just uh, below 1.5 uh, with approximation i can say it is a 1.4 bar uh, and in the table it is given 1.3268 okay uh, that's okay uh, one thing is here uh, one thing to note here uh, for the chart uh, uh, you as we are uh, reading this with our naked eyes and these scales are not so uh, perfect uh, always uh, the values we read will be approximate one we cannot read we cannot read uh, read with the uh, uh, precision of uh, 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 of a uh, point uh, two digit one digit or two digit or so okay in decimals we cannot go like that uh, but in property table if you observe up to four decimal points uh, precision points are uh, precision values are given okay this is only possible in tables uh, uh, but uh, using charts it is never possible always we will have uh, approximate values okay uh, so uh, i was telling about this then uh, enthalpy of liquid hf will be this much uh, i will drop uh, will come down here on the enthalpy scale it is about 175 kilojoule per kg and uh, for same minus 20 degree celsius saturated vapor enthalpy will be uh, 390 kilojoule per kg kelvin okay uh, kilojoule per kg sorry uh, the same things we i can cross verify with the tables let us look at minus 20 degree celsius and enthalpy of liquid is 173 and uh, on chart uh, i read uh, i read it as 175 so uh, 
only uh, two two units uh, difference is there and for vapor it is uh, 386 and uh, on chart i got uh, 390 okay so little variations are uh, there these are bound to happen and uh, so these uh, little variations or deviations are acceptable okay uh, <coughs> this is one thing then uh, so such uh, 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 saturation uh, values are available from uh, right from my, uh, minus 103 degrees celsius uh, covering uh, many points uh, in the next table in the next page also temperatures are there up to 101 so up uh, about uh, minus 100 to plus 100 that is 200 degrees celsius uh, data is covered for the saturation tables okay <coughs> now uh, these values are not applicable these values will not be applicable for the for for the region he on uh, on the superheated part okay uh, to find any value on the superheated part we have to use some some other relations uh, and the data of uh, uh, so, so saturated conditions okay saturated conditions uh, we have to make use them as a base or a reference uh, and uh, then uh, using some property relations we can uh, get the uh, uh, final values of uh, superheated vapor okay again for uh, superheated vapor uh, tables are available like this these are the superheated table uh, uh, properties but uh, uh, they, these are uh, these are very limited ones and uh, values are given only for the selected uh, range of uh, uh, pressure and temperatures uh, here you can see superheated table is given for a pressure of one bar and uh, uh, the, uh, these many temperatures uh, here pressure two bar four bar six bar so in between uh, pressure like three bar or five bar uh, the data is missing or data is not available in that case we have to go for the interpolation okay uh, that is quite uh, difficult and uh, laborious task to do uh, but still uh, uh, so in that case uh, it is good to go with the chart for superheated region it will be better to have a uh, better to have to locate uh, the point on the chart directly so that uh, enthalpy value can be directly obtained okay uh, that's how this uh, pH chart works uh, advantage of uh, using pH chart is that you, uh, you simply locate one point after locating one point all the property uh, data or all the property uh, values are obtained at one shot and at one uh, location and also uh, direct readings are available uh, we don't uh, need to any uh, we don't need to perform any calculations okay directly values are available for example any uh, any point i located here suppose uh, this is uh, 2.5 bar and i located here and this is the pressure of 2.5 bar and uh, temperature of 70 degrees celsius here uh, so i located this point from this i can directly read the temperature uh, enthalpy as a 450 kilojoule per kg uh, in the same manner uh, this is my point uh, i can read the entropy value uh, like 1.92 uh, and i can also read the density value it is in between 8 and 12 so it will be uh, close to 10 kg 10 kg per meter cube so uh, at one location i can find all the related associated properties okay uh, but this is not true in case of the uh, uh, tabular data okay uh, this is the major advantage and also one more uh, better thing or uh, 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 better part of this ph chart is uh, uh, we are going to uh, we will uh, we will plot the cycle diagram or processes here uh, that helps us to visualize uh, actually how how the processes are going to be and uh, we can predict from the that uh, the end states uh, can be predicted okay that that's a uh, that's a very beneficial factor here because without visualization from the tabular data we cannot visualize anything okay uh, but uh, on ph diagram i can uh, by plotting this uh, these processes uh, i can at least guess i can at least have a guess uh, of uh, of unknown things uh, how the uh, how those end states uh, will be looking okay just a minute uh, all right uh, uh, friends uh, 
uh, i think even after so so much of uh, detailed uh, explanation of uh, ph chart and property tables uh, things uh, might uh, things still might not be clear uh, to you uh, you may not, may not get any clear cut idea uh, at this stage but uh, don't worry uh, <coughs> Uh, we will solve uh, in the next video we will solve one typical problem uh, in that by using the ph chart and the property tables uh, <coughs> only that way by so uh, by the solving the problem uh, <coughs> that will help uh, that will help you understand and that will test your understanding and uh, uh, we will give you a clear a clear understanding and uh, uh, logic will be a lot clearer uh, in that video okay uh, so meanwhile i would suggest you to have this uh, uh, to have the copy of uh, this thing this r134a refrigerant and uh, uh, for the next video uh, come with the pen and paper uh, and uh, you are required to do as i uh, as i tell the steps uh, and a blank have a blank copy of uh, this uh, chart <coughs> this chart or uh, take a print of a blank copy uh, on that uh, you have to perform uh, uh, have to plot the processes and cycle diagram uh, that will uh, that will give you all the clear logic about uh, how to use this chart okay uh, so i am stopping this video here uh, i hope uh, you you might have uh, <coughs> you might have given uh, pay attention to this thing and uh, you might uh, might have got some idea uh, okay no worries uh, if you uh, oh, okay uh, i am uh, stopping this video here uh, let's see you in the next lecture